Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 53 with another ex another exhibition match. Once again, Hokumoko and Exploit. This time on Sapphire Shores Dry. This one apparently was played right after the last one, so I'll keep the win counter up because that is, well, basically the next match. Seems a sensible thing to do. First off, as usual, go over the map slightly. Sapphire Shores Dry. It is a big map, as I just mentioned. It is basically like the last map, but stitched two of them side by side, with a little bit extra on each side. It's a f heavy econ map. This is a map you typically see go into the half hour mark. It's hard to get units across due to the size, but it is not impossible. It's also really, really, really bright, and I probably should have turned the, the brightness down slightly. That's better. Okay. Not quite so obnoxiously bright. Anyway, we have... So, both players start out. They have the entire eastern and entire western side. Both of them opting for the center, which is not a surprising choice because I'm very near this main ramp. There is still the ramp over to the north in both cases that is vulnerable, but they are going to be protecting the primary center ramp, and from that, the south side. Though in this is an asymmetric map, and given the positions, Exploit's going to have a lot more mechs protected. Hokomoko has about three to the south that are protected, and Exploit has five. Plus the fact that one of those and yet another one is right next to them, so that's, that's a pretty good start. I'm not really sure. That this map probably could use, could use some symmetrizing, I think. It's roughly symmetric, but as you can see, there are some differences. It would appear that this is actually, this is right, the mexes are radially symmetric, while the layout is mirror, uh, partially mirrored. Like, this side here is mirrored, the rest of it's radially symmetric. Like, these cliffs are mirrored. They're mirrored along the y-axis. Everything else is radially symmetric. It's an interesting choice. Anyhow, get started. Interesting choice of factors in both players. Given the size of the map, you typically see light vehicles or hovercraft, sometimes heavy tanks. Very rarely do you see Cloaky Bot and Amphib. Amphib in particular, that is an interesting choice. They have been becoming considerably more popular as of late. Amphibious bots are powerful. They do have, especially ducks. Ducks and scallops, they are powerful. They cannot be underestimated. But they also are kind of dangerous to themselves. Ducks, well, not scallops, but ducks. Ducks are dangerous to themselves. On the other hand, exploit going for Cloakabot Factory. Typical factory overall, but a little bit unusual for a map of this size. Still, against Amphib is not actually that easy of a choice. The Amphib versus Cloakie matchup is a tricky one. Ducks one-shot Glaives. Like Glaives have 200 health. Ducks have 230 damage. Well, 115 times 2, but both of the, the, both of the missiles tend to hit. They are homing, after all. So they typically one-shot glaives. So you need a lot of glaives. And they're about the same cost, too. Like 80 to 65. It is a tricky matchup in the early game for the Cloakabot Factory. Once you get into the mid to late game, it's a bit easier once you get Sharpshooters and Zeus up. And have easy ways of dealing with basically everything that, that the Factory can throw at you. The Amphib Factory does, of course, have the Grizzly. But it is one of the more bare-bones factories. Especially since everything but the duck is still quite expensive. Cloakeeve has an easier time in the mid-game, since they can get slightly cheaper units. They can, get, they can get their riots for, well, their skirmishers for cheaper. The riots for a decent cost. Their assaults are still, still expensive. And, of course, the sharpshooter can just kill things with impunity, because amphibs are fairly slow. Overall, though, if, I guess, the late game and a couple grizzlies pop up, then it's going to be difficult for exploit to deal with that. Still possible, but it takes a lot of sharpshooter shots, or, you know, a few dozen... Glaives or Rockos to put it down. Anyway, this is still the early game, so Hokumoko has a bit of an advantage given the matchup. Ducks moving in from all sides just to scout out, see where the mechs are, see if there's any naked mechs, and there are. Oh boy, are there. There's one over the south, one over the north. Although the one of the north is not being spotted out, actually. Hokumoko not spotting that. And switching over to Rockos, decent idea. Ducks are, I believe, faster than Rockos. Given the speed. Yeah. Ducks are slightly faster than Rocco's. I'll also just point out, this... I, I'm trying to remember who it is. I think we're... Is that what it is? I have to double check the poll requests. But yeah, the... No, Sprung. Sorry, Sprung did this. Thank you, Sprung. Put in a lot more information about what's going on. Also changed the units for speed. So this is the per tick. This is per second. This is like 32 ticks per second or something like that. I think it's... Okay, it's being counted as 30 in this case. It's a little bit weird. The way the sim frames work is a little wonky, but it... 
I think it's 32 frames a second, not 30. But the speed here is being computed as 30. Unless it's 30 frames a second, but economy just works in this weird 32 frame counter. I'm not entirely sure. The point is, the speed is now being put in per second, but there's also a bunch of other information as well. So thank you for that. Really appreciate that. Appears to be a slight issue with the with the value used for degrees. Also no turret turn, right? But otherwise, pretty okay. Yeah, the, the value used for degrees apparently not quite coming out right. Might be Unicode, which is only supported in later engine versions. I think it probably is. That's probably the problem. Anyway, back to the game itself. Hokomoko taking a lot of territory. They've taken their entire western side of the map, as is Exploit taking the eastern side, but they're also pushing into the center very aggressively. While Exploit, on the other hand, playing much more defensive, but not getting a power infrastructure to actually support this. They do have they do have wind gens around, and the wind gens do have 1.4 minimum, so they are the better option. But Hokomoko, they're still getting power infrastructure and they're getting territory. Exploit, if they survive long enough, they might be able to get away with the reclaim. However, reclaim has been nerfed in this version. It's actually just recently, as of a couple days ago, there was a slight nerf. It only affects reclaim when it's like a hundred energy on your metal extractors, which isn't which might be relevant in this map, actually. This map definitely can support that. We saw the game in Common Catcher on Sunday, and it got up to thousands of energy. I actually had to change the amount of digits shown in order to, to display the amount of energy in that game. I thought three would be enough, but no. I needed four. It was like 1,500 energy for, I think with Lowry in that game at one point. That's the situation where it was nerfed. Situations, however, like this, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter for quite some time. So yeah, exploit, if they can keep this held, they should be able to get an economic advantage by way of overdrive, especially once these connect. Because even right now, they're at like 1.5 or no, 1.3. But if they connect them, that'll get them close to 1.5. And if they get double, that's... That's even better. And right now, you can see they are actually ahead economically. They are pushing that into the factory as well, getting the conjures they need, but they don't have territory. What they do have, however, is a lot of corpses coming from Hokomoko. Hokomoko donating a lot of metal, as Exploit has gotten the riots they need, and enough Rockos to deal with the gla Sorry, deal with the ducks. So they have been able to push back the ducks. There hasn't really been a shift to boys yet. No, still all ducks. Surprisingly, no shift to boys. Unsurprisingly, no shift to scallops. Vaguely surprisingly, no shift to archers, but... Sorry, archers. Anglers. Archers would be a bad idea. Archers don't make sense. Exploit is not gone for... Actually, archers wouldn't be a terrible idea in theory, because an air switch at this stage in the game is completely... Pre is not predictable, but likely. It could happen. Hasn't happened, though. Exploit is going very hard for cloakies. But this would be around the time where an air switch would start to be possible. Not really happening, though. So, not building archers. Good idea. Sorry, anglers. I got that back backwards. Angler. Yes, archer is actually the unit I meant. Archers are also a bad choice. Not as bad as ducks, though. Although this warrior in a, in a tight spot, but doesn't matter. Able to get through the ducks. Just chewing through ducks, getting all this into exploits territory. There is a lot of reclaim, and they are taking it. It's 200 right here. Including the Sapphires, it's another 600 over here. This is closer to the center, harder to keep. Still, just, well, not including the Sapphires, 330. Exploit appreciates the donation, Hokomoko. However, Hokomoko doesn't care, because they have 6k to 5k in the army. They are ahead in army. I don't agree with the unit types used, but I think they're just going to try to go for numbers. Try to use numbers to win where unit types are not doing super well. Try to one-shot the warriors, try to overwhelm them. The rock was still able to retreat and hit pretty effectively. So even with that, the ducks are having a hard time really pushing through. Because warriors... Warriors kind of beat them. They do pretty well. They are raiders, but they are fairly tough raiders. As the ducks, I should say, are fairly tough, fairly strong raiders. The rock has, however, have the advantage of range and... Ducks still have a short range, like 250. So they're kind of on the edge of where I mentioned last game, where you kind of, you still get Lanchester's Linear Law, despite the fact that they have range, because of the way that the mechanics work of unit size and the fact that units can't shoot through each other. And Rocco's not so much, but I think Ducks are on the edge of that. They're pretty close to where you can start to get a bit of Square Law critical mass. 
Rockos definitely are more in that respect, but still, at this point, the Ducks are... The Ducks are able to get a lot of damage in, but there has been an air switch. x has gone for the air switch, and no anglers from Okamoko. That actually would have been a good idea, like I said. That would have been a good idea, given the fact that it is rather predictable to go for that air switch. However, Okamoko going for a singularity reactor, they just want to push overdrive. They have the territory advantage, they don't have a lot of pylons. In fact, they have no pylons. Yeah, rather surprisingly, they have no real overdrive infrastructure whatsoever. I'm not sure what the motivation is. Exploit, however, does have quite a lot of overdrive infrastructure, and they're looking at plus 1.5 or so. Yeah, a little over plus 1.5. So, every single one of these metal extractors is... It says plus 2.14. It's actually more like plus 3. That's about 21 metal. Just I don't know, more than that. 24 metal. At least. 24 or 25 metal from the back here. Despite the fact that they lost the front here, Exploit is still holding fairly strong. Wokomoko, they're pushing so much metal into that Singularity Reactor, I think that they're going to end up being pushed back. Like, Exploit's going to be able to defend against this. They have the Sharpshooter. There we go. That's what they needed. That is the unit they needed more than anything is the Sharpshooter. They have it. That is going to put them in a wonderful position. And the Zeus is also good there. It's, for good measure, it's the Zeus. It does not outrange... Well, barely outranges the Duck. Yeah, the sharpshooter is what they really need. And hammers as well. Exploit seems to be really trying to experiment with the hammers. Not totally sure about the motivation there, but they are pushing the experimentation on the hammers. I do like to see some metagame experimentation like that. I don't expect it's going to go anywhere, though, just given that hammers don't actually hit much. I mean, it's not a terrible zoning tool. I mean, it does kind of threaten the area. It makes it difficult. You have to kind of move the radars around. You either have them moving around and thus their turrets rotating more because they're rotating with the body, so maybe a good way of basically reducing the overall DPS of the raiders, but it's not a good way of killing them, or units in general. Not a good way of killing them, maybe a good way of distracting them. Keeping them kind of on edge. Getting a lucky hit here or there, and for the most part, just keeping the raiders from getting too comfortable. And we're looking at a factory kill attempt. Bomber's coming in, and one more bomber shot. That is a factory dead. One dead factory right here. I don't know why the resets are, right, but that, that's just a bit distracting. But yeah, dead factory, but Hokomoko has gotten enough pylons. They have a few pylons. They are pushing these... These metal extractors up to plus seven. Should get a few more pylons, but I'm sure they are planning on doing that. Yeah, Hokomoko, and they also have been reclaiming all those sapphires. These sapphires for Exploit have gone completely unreclaimed. I don't think Exploit has been reclaiming any of the map features at all so far. Hokomoko, however... Getting a hovercraft platform? Getting a chainsaw, yes, but no anglers. You're really going for ducks, and ducks do not hit air. I mean, they can hit air on approach. Sort of. I wouldn't rely on them to hit air. And three sharpshooters in play. Looks like the third one just got built. Exploit that sharpshooter. Perfect decision. Really good to have that. Now, given the fact that they have switched to hovercrafts, the Hokomoko switched to hovercrafts, it's a little bit dangerous, especially they've also gone for air switch for a swift focus. Now, swifts have been nerfed slightly in this build. It's like 300 health instead of 360, which should probably only have the effect of making hawks a bit stronger, like relatively. So you get to see a bit more RPS in the air. I don't know if it'll have any effects other than that. And honestly, given the fact that the swifts don't really have much to counter them, the warriors are going to try to hit them, but nothing can really do much damage. And most importantly, ravens cannot kill them. Ravens cannot hit them. So the Ravens are not going to be doing too well. There is a small set of Swifts coming out from Exploit, but really the best thing to do would probably be to go for Hawks, because I think with the Swift HP nerf, the Hawks will actually be useful. Not 100% sure, though. I have not had a chance to test it myself, since none of the games I've played since the new patch have actually gone to air. Well, okay, one of them days I started with gunships, but that was on a water map, and those tend to get... Like, that was on Rapids. Rapids just gets weird. Oh, Exploit's wondering where I choose these battles. I choose these battles because I go on the I go on the replays page, look for battles that were done with quick match, or that were done with that's getting a little loud. Replays that are done with quick match or done with with one oh, sorry, quick match 1v1. That's what I look for. I look for quick match 2v2 if there's a 2v2 tournament coming up. Usually quick match 1v1. Used to be I look for the 1v1 all welcome room before quick match started. But now I just do quick match 1v1. So if you're playing quick match games in 1v1, it's possible that I'm going to cast them. Because that's what I look for. If you're playing a private room, I tend not to cast it unless someone requests it. 
because I figure most of the time private rooms are from newer players trying to get their grips in the game. I don't want to cast those unless they ask for it because I don't think they'd want that. It's like, I'm trying to learn the game. Why are you criticizing my play? I don't even know how. Like, yeah, that that's fair. I'm not going to do that. Not unless you ask. If you ask, then sure. Anyway, back to the game. This is why sharpshooters are a good idea. Maces will die to them. The Rockers will also kill Maces, since overall skirmishers do counter riots. But sharpshooters... Yeah, skirmish anti-heavy. This is a heavy riot. It goes perfectly for the sharpshooters. The sharpshooters work very well here. Mokomoko, however, is trying to gain air control, and they have a lot of swifts. 23 swifts, and exploit has... I don't know if they have any. They have three. Yeah, Hokomoko has air control right now. Exploit cannot push forward with the air. Not to mention the chainsaws. Like, we cannot... Like, these are the chainsaws. The entire... Hokomoko's entire base is a no-fly zone. Despite that, Exploit's going to try. Actually, if they hit... If they succeed and hit the Singularity Reactor, that'll probably end the game right there. Swifts, however, are getting rid of the Rockos. They are, however... They're in position, but the big threat is the chainsaw. And the Swifts... Exploit doing a nice job here. They are moving north, so the Swifts have a bit more time to actually get to the... Well, not by much. I think their idea was that the Swifts are out of position, get the Ravens even further away from that. However, the Ravens should still be able to kill that Singularity Reactor. They only need five. That's three, four... Oh, one short. Just one short. One too many Ravens died, and those Caretakers are going to heal that up. If one more Raven was sent, one more Raven survived, that would have been it. But no, Exploit actually throwing in the towel as a result, setting everything to self-destruct. I think that was a little extreme. Exploit had a pretty good position despite losing the bombers. Like, they still... It's actually kind of hard to analyze their position right now. But yeah, they they had a pretty good position. They were... I mean, they had their units. They had their economy. It was fairly healthy. I can kind of see why they'd be demoralizing enough to cause them to throw in the towel right then and there. But that was... I don't think that was really game. Although I might not have been paying attention because the thing is they did lose a lot of Rockos to the south. That would also have been a big blow. So while I think that they... I think they surrendered too soon. I can see why they surrendered. Yeah, actually even pointing out it was... They couldn't get the Singularity Reactor down. That just pissed them off and they just thought, okay, this, this game's over. I can't do anything. Which I can understand completely. And honestly, I've mentioned before, I, I talked about surrenders before, and I know I sound a little bit back and forth on that. Basically, if you're just playing ladder matches, and you know you're not going to win, I mean, you might have a Hail Mary throw if you really go for it, but you're probably not going to. If that's the case, then just don't worry about it. You might as well surrender. Surrender, go to the next game. Not the biggest deal to lose one game, just... Figure out what you need to know. Maybe watch the replay, like times five speed or something. Figure out what your opponent did, what you can learn, what you did. It's often easier to figure out what you did when you're watching it without having the pressure of playing at the same time. And then go on to the next game. Just, that's it. However, that doesn't hold when you're playing in a tournament. When you're playing in a tournament, then that's when you really want to be tenacious. If you're playing in a tournament and it looks like you're going to lose, do not give up. Do not give up until the bitter end in a tournament because if you do, or at least... Not, not in game three of a tournament. You gotta be careful because you don't want to get tired. Like if you win but you tire yourself out and you're about to go into finals, that's a bad idea. But if it's game three and you lose this, you're out. And you win this, you're in finals. It's worth it to win it. So it, you kind of have to balance it out with how much energy you'll have. But if it's in the last game, if, it's, if you lose and you're out, play to the bitter end. But if you're playing a ladder match, don't. Just surrender, go to the next game. It's a little bit tricky to know what to do when, but that's a rough rule. Anyway, a little bit surprised, but yeah, not totally concerned. And that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Rather interesting to see exploits. They have grown as a player, definitely. They're much stronger. I mean, Hokomoko is an extremely strong... Well, they are a high skill player. 1820. 1820 LO is nothing to sneeze at. And exploit really held their own quite well, given the LO difference. So, yeah, they are still a dangerous player. I mean, they were like 1,200 LO a month ago. Now they're nearly 1,500. They're getting up there. They're getting the game. I still think the Hammers are 
an odd choice. Like I said, I kind of understand. The, I can understand a logic behind them to try to keep the Raiders on their toes. They have to move around a bit. They can't fire as often. They aren't quite so confident, and occasionally they get killed by stray shots. But I don't know if it's worth the cash compared to just having more riots and skirmishers, or more riots in particular. It might be worth it. I'm not sure. I don't really see it much. And I don't really use it much myself. It might be an unexplored part of the meta that's actually stronger than expected. And if that's the case, that would actually really break up the Defender Nest play, which has been a common feature for the last few months. It'd be interesting to see if that happens. Anyway, that's kind of it for my analysis, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching again, and have a good night, everyone.